This is the Milky Way galaxy, and today we're going to create a black hole that is as big as it, and then have it eat the entire Milky Way. This was a suggestion in my comments, and if you want to leave a suggestion, put it down in the comments of this video, and maybe you'll be in the next one. Okay, so we're going to start with Sagittarius A, which is the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. So you can actually see it there, that little black dot. But we're going to add another one about here. And let's turn on a green background so we can kind of see... Okay, so here's our Sagittarius A black hole, but we want the radius of this black hole to be one whole galaxy. So let's change this to Milky Way radius and have it be one. So now you can see Sagittarius A is actually bigger than the whole Milky Way. Oh, you can see the distortion of the Milky Way gets pushed so far out. And here's like the core. So I'm actually going to move it a little bit away so we can still see what we're dealing with. So the new Sagittarius A is this big and the Milky Way is right here. So let's play time and speed it up and see what happens to the whole Milky Way. So a lot of time has passed. You can see all the stars and the central black hole is getting pushed towards the new giant black hole. And it looks like they're actually getting shot back out, most of them. Because they get really close, but then they actually like do a gravity, um, gravity assist out. And it looks like pretty much everything got launched back out into space from the new Sagittarius A. Interesting. Okay, now let's try it again, but let's make the black hole way bigger than the Milky Way, and hopefully we can actually suck the whole thing up instead of shoot parts of it back out. So we're gonna grab Sagittarius A again. This far away to start, let's turn on that green background again. Now for its Schwarzschild radius, we're gonna put it at 100 galaxy radius. Oh, we already ate the Milky Way, so it worked. Wait, we need to do that again. Okay, here's the Milky Way in comparison to our new black hole, which is ju just huge, like the biggest black hole to ever exist. And I think if it, oh, oh, did a nebula make it out? Oh, this nebula we're focused on made it out of the black hole, but <laughs> it looks like everything else. Wait, we need trails on. Okay, so some of it still made it out, but a lot of it got sucked up that time. So this is the, actually the debris from two galaxies. Okay, we got a suggestion to make all the gas giants the size of the sun. So let's do it. We're going to start with Jupiter right here. And we're going to pause time while we do this. And I'm pretty sure they will all turn into stars. So we're just going to type one sun for the mass of Jupiter. And so far it looks okay. But I bet if we play time, it'll turn into a star. Let's see. Yes, it's a cold star now. Interesting. Okay. But it looks like so far it's okay. So let's do the same thing with all of them. Saturn now. One sun. Okay, Saturn's the size of the sun now. And Uranus make the size of the sun. Perfect. And Neptune. And then that'll be all of the gas giants and ice giants the size of the sun. Well, the mass of the sun. The size and mass are different. Okay. So let's focus on Jupiter, which is the radius is the same as the sun. So this is exactly pretty much the same size as the sun. Play time, speed up time, and just see what happens to the whole solar system. So at first it looks like nothing too dramatic. Okay, Jupiter's orbit gets pulled in. Oh, the sun is right here. It pulled the sun so hard that they kind of become binary. Where did Earth go? Or, or it's all the way out here. It's gonna freeze. It got ejected from the whole solar system. Jupiter pulls a lot of asteroids in. Let's turn on the orbit so you can see how greatly it's affecting this whole system. Saturn's getting wrapped around too. So it looks like the sun kind of has Mercury and Venus captured in its own system and Saturn, I guess all of the other gas giants are kind of all over the place pulling things. Oh, Mars got ejected. <laughs> Neptune and Uranus are still coming in. Okay, this is as fast as it'll let me run it, but it's complete chaos for the solar system. They're all like dark stars now. Neptune, why does Neptune look like it's the only one that's still in its orbit? Even though it's not, like it's gonna get pulled in. Interesting, that's cool to see. Our next suggestion is to combine Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, and then terraform the planet that they combine into. Okay, so we're gonna open a blank simulation to combine them in. Okay, so we're gonna start with Mercury and we're gonna put it right here. And then we're gonna launch Venus into that. And, oh, okay, the collision happened. And then we're gonna combine Earth into that. Beautiful, plus Mars too. Oh, did Mars miss? Oh, it's kind of working. Clear the fragments. Mars, come back. Put you right here. Put you right here. Move you down. Yes, okay. This new planet here, we're gonna name it Proto Planet, is every single rocky planet combined. So we're gonna save it now. 
and then we will start a new simulation and add the sun in the sun and then use our proto planet in it and try to terraform it okay proto planet we'll put it one au away which is the same distance as earth from the sun let's speed up time and wait for it to cool down to see what we are working with on it okay it looks all right so far you can see it has water and an atmosphere most likely all the good stuff from this came from earth let's check our life likelihood right now 36.5 percent already so there's not a ton of terraforming that needs to be done it's actually going up so we'll let it go as high as it can oh no way 87.8 this is already super habitable is that city lights i saw on the back yes so there actually is life on here already um and vegetation grew by itself we don't even need to terraform this it did it all for us i guess we'll just leave it then okay our next suggestion asks if we can make the moon have life let's try so we're gonna try to terraform the moon so here's earth and here's the moon so the step first step to making the moon have life is definitely going to be adding water but before we can add water we need to add a tiny bit of hydrogen to keep that water on the surface so that should be good because otherwise it'll all just like evaporate off into space so we can kind of just like so these darker areas on the moon are actually called seas so we can actually just fill the seas with water so they're like actual seas like that looks pretty good to me okay and then next we need to add an atmosphere which will add good temperatures and such Okay, so we're going to want this atmosphere to be a light blue color. And we'll do some adjusting on the opacity. That's looking better. Let's add clouds too. Check that out. That's looking good already. And some vegetation would not hurt. Okay, I added some green on there to simulate the vegetation. And let's check its habitability as of now. We got 32.2%, which is pretty good. But I think I can get it a little bit higher if we add um, our rotational period. Set that to one day so it's no longer tidally locked with Earth. Which would probably affect Earth a little bit, but that gets us to 62.8% life likelihood, which is very good. So now we have the habitable moon, um, and this is the backside of it, actually. Look at that. It's beautiful. There's actually a lot of water on it. Um, but let's speed up time over a long time and see if it lasts. Okay, it's been about 200 years since it's been terraformed and let's check its habitability now 61.9 about the same that's perfect so this is a long-term terraforming of the moon mmm says make the solar system orbit a long sword okay so i know exactly how we're gonna do this we're going to go to the sun and then go to actions and then go replace object and then we can actually just search for the sword long sword so as long as it's paused we should be fine right now so the long sword gets replaced and then we want the mass of the long sword to be one sun you can see just how big a solar sized long sword is okay and theoretically if we hit play all the planets should stay exactly where they are because something with exactly the same mass as the sun replaced it yeah it looks like it works um, the only downside to this is that the earth is going to freeze over because there's no more heating coming from the long sword. So now if we set its surface temperature to what, 5,000 Kelvin, let's see if, oh, it just instantly cools down because there's no way for it to sustain that heat. But I wonder if just that little boost helped the earth. No, it doesn't look like it. Pitch black on the earth and it is freezing over. So if we add a flashlight, we can actually see what's happening. And you can see the oceans are starting to freeze just after a few months. And after a few years, the entire thing is one big ball of ice, which would probably still have life under its oceans. You can see the life likelihood dropping steadily over time. So let's see how low it gets. Oh, after about 200 years, the life likelihood drops to zero. So all life on Earth would be, would be dead at this point. Um, and the Earth's similarity drops by the day. So a sad future for us if our sun ever gets replaced by a sword. Okay, our last suggestion for today says replace the moon with a sun the same size as the moon. Okay, so we're going to take the moon, which is right here, and then replace the moon with the sun, but then shrink the sun to be the same size as the moon. So let's add the sun. So we're actually not going to be able to make the mass small enough. So as long as we stay paused, Earth will stay alive, but we can shrink its radius small enough. So we want this to be the radius of the moon. One moon radius. And then we'll lock that and get our mass about, what is it, 100 Jupiters? That's about the smallest we can get it. Oh, I hit play for one second and it ate the Earth. 
So it has 100 Jupiter's mass. So this moon-sized sun, it's only the size of the moon. Let's actually compare it. So here that is, and then here is, where's the moon? The moon. So you can see they are like exactly the same size, but its mass is 100 Jupiter's squished into this tiny little thing. You can see it actually wreaks havoc on the entire solar system by pulling the sun and all of the planets with it, shooting stuff out, which just got launched out. Venus, Venus is gone, Mars is gone. Mercury's gone. It just is killing all the planets. Um, and this tiny sun is actually heating up really hot and becoming blue. So let's speed up time as fast as it'll let us and then see what our future looks like with this. Uranus is still here. All the gas giants are still here orbiting this new binary system. Okay, so this is what the future looks like, I guess. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, leave a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed. You guys are awesome and I'll see you next time.